Hey guys, it's me, EOD Gaby here, and in this video, I'm back with another comparison, and we're going to be talking about Aventurine, who's, of course, right now in this patch, or maybe Hua Hua's rerun is coming up in future, who knows, next patch, the patch after... Either way, regardless of what it is, the benefit of being in the second half of the patch means that you have the live stream to look forward to to actually have some visibility moving forward. So if you know like next patch, Hua Hua is not coming out, then you know that's at least another six to nine weeks before you ever get to pull Hua Hua. That is very, very important. And let's start things first off, of course, with current value, which takes into consideration the current landscape of things. Um, TLDR, you know, this channel's always straight to the point. Um, and really, you can't go wrong with like the, the favorite four, I would like to say. You have the four, four, big four defensive units, big four preservation. I don't know what you call them, but uh, let's just call them the big four for simplicity's sake. You have Lota, you have Aventurine, you have Fu Shen, you have Huo Huo. These are your four five-star limited characters, and pretty much you can't go wrong with any four of them, but they do fulfill very, very different uh, niches and different team compositions they are best in slot in as well. Um, but that's what this video is all about. And if you're interested in the other limited 5-star characters, you can check out the other comparisons. This one, I specifically want to talk about Huo Huo. I save it last because I think a lot of people are uh, interested to know my thoughts about this comparison too. And you guys have mentioned it quite a bit in the comments, asking me to do one for Huo Huo too. So first things first, current value. If you are a person who plays very often with Dr. Ratio, or you really are looking for a defensive character to fill your uh, Acheron team. Maybe you have Gallagher and you find that his AI is just horrendous because it really, really is, as we did in our video on the channel already, um, talking about him. Lightly Aventuring is going to add tons of value to uh, Acheron team. He is able to plant debuffs. You are able to slap on the trend of universal market light cone on him to make him an even better the debuffer on the enemies because you, this trend of universal market is able to apply burn which means that you can possibly run him in like um, DOT teams as well although I don't think it's like his best suit because he does want to like crit on his own DOT teams generally focus more on like attack percentage and damage over time which might not be something that he really likes uh, in, that si in that sense striding away like now like shifting away from adventuring over to Ho Ho is where I think it she really shines both of them can kind of like play to DOT teams, but Ho Ho does it better because if you think about it, your supports that you're buffing DOT characters like um, Kafka, like Black Swan, your etc etc sample, Kuei Knife and then blah blah blah, you'll probably be using like attack buffers to buff them and Aventurine does, just doesn't get too much value out of that. Uh, compared to Ho Ho. Whereas Ho Ho gives attack, she gives energy, She, um, uh, your attack buffers also will eventually also benefit from her. Eventually doesn't really do too much since he skills off with defense. But uh, both usable in DOT teams, just that Ho Ho is slightly more best in slot for damage over time teams. So these are like the value I think that will differentiate both of them where they really excel in, in my opinion. Um, and let's talk a bit more about these comps. Ho Ho gives energy and Akron doesn't need it. So that's one of the things that if you, you'll probably hardly or never ever see a Ho Ho in an Acheron team unless there's another reason for that, maybe battering some kind of uh, team composition. But that is, in my opinion, the current value of these two characters and who stands out in what way. If you are a DOT player, you're looking for uh, characters that can be played. Uh, maybe you want to like battery other characters to let them do more work. So Ho Ho, in a sense, you can think of it as she's helping your other characters pop off more funneling them and battering them. Aventurine is protecting your team, but also wants to have a, a like share the glory, share the limelight and the damage uh, contribution for your overall team. Depending on what's your preferred playstyle, if you are a guy that likes all four characters to do damage, Aventurine likely will be your playstyle. If you're a person that wants to like focus on DPSs, you think it's much more straightforward to have traditional DPS doing damage, Ho Ho likely will be more up your avenue and more interesting for you as well. I always put like Akron in destruction for some reason because she like destroys everything. But uh, let's put them back where they are from. That's for the current value. And now let's talk about another thing, which is alternatives, which is very important thing to consider because you want to know like what exactly are you getting yourself into, whether there are other alternatives to these two particular characters that you can kind of get by. Um, and that's what we're going to talk about. They are, of course, ironically, alternatives to each other. You can either, you can easily have one of, of each other and it really isn't too much detriment. Like, I wouldn't say putting Akron in Ho Ho is fully, fully bad. You could even run, for example, like um, Pella here. And for example, maybe uh, let's say we have Black Swan here and you still are battering two out of three characters on your team and giving like buffs to two out of three of them. It's not the worst, but 
I, I would say it's still usable and it's not as if it's like impossible to make it work. So I would say the true alternatives to both of them, uh, I think in my opinion, will be a character, of course, uh, Luo Ta, Fu Shen, these two are without a doubt. These two are a given and I've already done videos more on like the big four comparing each and every single one of them. My thought process is the best way to think about the four of them is one, the timing of when you join Honkai Star Rail and two, of course, the order of which one do you pick up first. The very straightforward rule of thumb is picking two out of four is good enough. The two out of four big ones and why do keep people keep just mentioning the four of them is because they are enough to sustain your entire team solo and yet they do a lot of other things like buffing your team like um maybe insane amount of sustain like fusion some even give crit rate bar some give energy bar some deals damage some cleanse some strips and also not even use any skill points at all so it depends on what is the niche you really won't go wrong with any of them um but the rule of thumb is pick two out of four and why do I say like when you join the game? Because if you join in 2.0, you probably only had a chance recently to look at Luo Ta, uh, only recently to get uh, Venturi. In this case, this will be like your first two real defensive options. And if you have none of them at all, I think that it's a good idea to pick one up, especially if Ho Ho is at least in 2.3 uh, like and beyond. You will know from the live stream officially. So if you are sitting on the fence, I recommend you like wait out first. Well, once the live stream comes, then pull. Don't make like a hasty decision and just like randomly spam the banner because um, it, impulse is a, is really a killer for resource allocation games like Honkai Star Rail. So that is like the alternatives and a big statement of what I want to say. Not only that, of course, there are other characters that compete with them. And let me just share with you a few that I think of. Um, the others are probably like the Forza equivalent. I think a character like Gallagher will compete together with Aventrine in uh, damage over time or, or rather debuff oriented teams with Akron. Unfortunately, Gallagher's AI is absolutely rubbish and he's not very, very strong there. Also. So I don't really like him too much uh, in Akron teams because his AI is like really, really trash. He has four star stats making him very squishy and I find my team like getting one shotted across the board because of uh, I, I play in auto battle. So not really too much alternatives for Aventrine at this point. If you are looking at a follow-up team composition, um, he's also probably in a class of his own, doesn't have too much defensive follow-up characters. Maybe your other uh, exception will be like Mark 7, who is able to use Trend of Universal Market. She has follow-up also. Uh, and if you don't like like damage much or, or like damage fire MC, you probably don't care too much about a defensive offensive unit like Aventrine. So try like building your Fire MC for a bruiser style, like a bit of DPS, a bit of break, and see whether you like it a bit more. Um, that Then you will know whether you want a bit more offensive coming from your defensive position. position. And of course, ho ho, battery alternatives. That's the other than like healing, sustain and whatnot, because there are so many, right? If you want her for cleanse, you have Lynx, you have Natasha, you have other characters like uh, Bronya to some extent for cleanse. You have even Luo Ta, March 7, blah, blah, blah. Aventurine, of course, unfortunately doesn't have cleanse. He does have effect rest. But um, I would say that cure is better than prevention in this case because curing the debuffs is guaranteed. Whereas prevention might not be 100% for effect rest scenario as well. Uh, so in Honkai Star Wars, it's the reverse. You rather like have cleanse rather than like just effect rest because effect rest, things can still go wrong. RNG, shit happens and stuff. Um, other energy buffers in the game probably will be Tingyun. And I think that's about it, right? Other than like light cones, some sh like shared feeling light cones, energy buffing is like very, very important. Uh, especially if you guys play a character like Ronmei, um, who is now like very, very popular. As we mentioned, she's going to be one of the best characters as we did in one of these videos previously also on her. Uh, she is a character that needs a lot of energy and Ho Ho just helps you meet the efficiency threshold much easier so you can focus on other stuff to make the stats a lot more achievable. Uh, Team-wide energy is very, very valuable. And I think that she's in a class of her own in that sense. She has no alternative and the thing that she does is very, very valuable. Um, just that with Akron being so meta and in the game that doesn't need too much energy, uh, her value kind of like dropped a little bit. But um, other than that, not too many alternatives for her playstyle, her character too. Um, they are really, really very unique characters. I like both of them. They both will add a lot of value to your account, uh, as you can see so far. So choosing between them will be very hard, which I will do right at the end of this video. So far, as you can see, we are being very impartial, unbiased, helping you make a better decision-making uh, process too. And next up, in order to understand a decision, you need to ask yourself, what's in it for the future? Why do I always like to talk about this after you look at current value? Is because 
the future value kind of determines do you actually want to pull them now because you need them desperately in current value situation or why don't you just like skip and wait until they get better if their future value was like super good so skip them now get them in future if they're going to appreciate in value and just neglect the the entirety save your gems for other characters and stuff um in this case future value i think between both of them they both scale very well with time like that's a quick tldr why do i say that any other character in future that they want to release that desperately needs energy Hua Hua definitely will help them out uh, she's more offensive at, in uh, terms of like attack buffing, buffing the whole team in uh, in energy and stuff. If they decide to go the route of like introducing more characters that don't need energy, unfortunately, Ho Ho doesn't benefit too much from that. They've shown that it is possible, but I don't think we will likely have too many of these kind of characters uh, in the game. Then after that, it will shift the meta to more like turn manipulation, which is kind of like back to a Bronya Sparkle kind of meta. But uh, anyways, for Aventurine, Future value also looks bright. He plays into a lot of team compositions like follow-up teams like uh, Dr. Ratio, Topaz and Numbi and maybe other characters in future that have a lot of follow-up attacks. You have your IPC that might even come out which we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, but tons of um, avenues for him to improve. The one biggest thing that no one really wants to talk about because everyone is like in the hype. Everyone is like, oh, novelty, new character, hype, hype, hype. The one thing that no one really wants to, to say very often is the problem with Aventurine is very, very hard controlling CCs, crowd controls from that the enemy puts on you. For example, like the Kafka debuff that she immobilizes your unit, you don't have any response for that. And a lot of people's biggest argument and defense is, oh, he gives effect rest of 50%. But uh, don't forget, if this that can be easily countered with enemies having high effect hit rate. Because you're only considering your perspective, like your hit rate, your effect rest, uh, doesn't mean you have 100% effect rest or like 70% effect rest, you will block everything. Enemies can have like 100% effect hit rate, they are, uh, the stats suddenly scale with that. And then you realize that your whole team, even though they are not taking damage, they are also not doing anything because all of them are being CC'd. And that is probably the biggest issue with uh, Ventrine, unless of course somehow you have other characters in your team that can cleanse for him. Um, that's something that I think is not really mentioned. And you realize in the memory of chaos right now, uh, very little units have very hard crowd control. Maybe you have Cocolia which drops like one ice here and there, but nothing else much uh, apart from that. And that's how they are trying to sell inventory. Let me just forget about all these. Other than that future value, I've talked about the downside and pros of both of them in the, how they are expected to do well in future. In this category, I think that the character that will do slightly better is um, Ho Ho compared to Aventrine just because the crowd controlling is a really big deal and currently the only characters that have a lot of cleanse in the game comes from your defensive units. The time that when it comes, the time that you need cleanse and you have to play two sustained units just for the cleanse, I would rather you just swap uh, Aventrine out for even a character, for example like Ho Ho, like Luo Ta. These characters might be even better or even Fu Shen who has a single instance block of CC also. So I think that Ho Ho is slightly better in this future value camp of where I see it going. But, 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 there's another category that we also have to consider which is potential. Now, potential is slightly different from uh, future value because it incorporates predictions of what Hoyovers might do based on like market and economic things that make sense for a company. I think that they are planning to sell more IPC characters and that is like without a doubt. Characters like Topaz and Nambi, Doctor Ratio and other future characters like Jade, Diamond or whoever else that they are already starting to tease, you can see it. If they want to sell us like a full IPC team, they have to make the defensive unit at least quite good, right? So that it creates like a cornerstone, no pun intended, to create like IPC team compositions and stuff like that. So I think that in terms of marketing value, even though eventually doesn't sound like a theoretically great unit, he makes a lot of sense to help Hoyovers make shit tons of money. And I think that definitely that is something that is worth considering because we live in reality here. We don't just live in a simulation, right? Uh, Hoyover still has to make their dollars. For that scenario, I think that uh, Aventry is very, very attractive. I really like it a lot because he plays into a lot of themes that I think Hoyovers will back and push on. If you think about it on the flip side of things, Ho Ho, where else will she go from here? Every character in the game already uses energy. You have a team-wide energy buffer like Ho Ho, you have attack buffing, um, and right now, I don't think energy is really their focus. You can see that they are willing to try new things to, to even stray away from energy, like having Akron in the game which uses no energy. She, they might want to do more in future. Or maybe a character that doesn't even ultimate, for example, doesn't mean use their burst, just only has basic attack and skill, no ultimate at all, or just like a passive ultimate. 
uh, that practically doesn't do anything or is useless. Don't forget, we still have like a like cone. I think it's uh, subscribe for more, was it? And you guys definitely should subscribe for more if you are liking this video. The subscribe for more like cone, the one with coin iPhone on it, basically is if your energy is full, you get a damage buff. There's still no use for that light cone, but you can see that one day they might incorporate a character that doesn't use their out because it's like, maybe gives you practically nothing for using it, but their base and skill is very high. Um, and all these things make me like me think that the potential for Ho Ho is more stable, more predictable, but not anything that scales like very, very massively because there's no real agenda that Hoyovers can push. You can't push like a, a IPC faction like Aventurine has. You can't push a like, follow-up. Um, the team composition and whatnot. And of course, the last thing I will talk about is uh, meta that is shifting. We already know that characters like Topaz and Numbi, Doctor Ratio will likely be meta. Follow-up teams are going to be way more attractive. If you haven't seen the video, it's on the channel. I talked about a changing meta and what's to come. Aventurin plays into all those themes and everything uh, about him shines in Don't Them. Check that video out if you haven't. I think it's good insight if you're predicting, like planning what to get. Definitely will help you out a little bit. Whereas like Huo Huo, she plays into more uh, multiple DPS teams, which I think is also going to be very, very successful. But uh, if your cornerstone or your character that is going to be carrying your account for the next maybe five, six patches is Akron, you pretty much will be playing Huo Huo on the opposite team and banking on a character that cannot work well with meta in one half at least uh, just reduces the chance of her succeeding by 50% compared to Aventurine that can work with Akron or even work on your other team that you just create like a new follow-up team. A lot more versatile in my opinion, and that's something that is not factored about. Of course, it's very, very like, um, what if, maybe, and stuff. That's why I put it in this potential category. But for this category, potential, I think Aventurine is slightly ahead. And uh, bear with me, we have just one last category, which is actually probably the most important one. Uh, and of course, I'll end it with my thoughts as well, my own personal bias, um, which is maybe more important than this one as well. Um, but free to play kit. Who do I think works better uh, long story short, both characters, preservation characters, uh, abundance characters, generally are very cheap to build. You don't really need too much gear for them. Um, one thing that has to be said is there is a 5-star light cone in the free-to-play shop, your your simulated universe Herta shop, for preservation characters. You still unfortunately do not have a 5-star abundance light cone yet, but um, one in the future. So that's like future upside potential. Who knows when that might come around. But if that does, then of course, um, Abundance definitely is way more free to play, but still tons of other options for Abundance characters to use. Um, very, very cheap to build. You don't even need Eidolons on them. I don't even have like my um, talents leveled up too much. I think they are like all sitting on like 7, 7, 7, 7. Basic attacks like barely anything. So very, very affordable to build like sustained characters like Ho Ho, Luo Ta, Fu Shen and etc. Don't really need too much investment. Whereas Aventurine on the other hand, Free to play in terms of money investment, in terms of uh, either you don't need much oil lawns, you don't need much light cones, very, very affordable there. But one thing to note is that he drains a lot of resources from your relic pool and your talent books and materials. Excuse me, they're choking on my talent books and materials, thinking how much I have to farm. But um, you do want to have more levels in his tracers and stuff like that because you want to do damage from him. So you can't just leave it at like 666 and um, expect to do big numbers. You have to push it up to like at least 9 or ideally 10 if you are maining him so that you can see the best value for Aventurine. And that is where I think that he becomes less free to play friendly because you do need a lot of gear. Um, but granted, these two characters, the downside of Ho Ho in terms of free to play is Aventurine takes all your defense junk and I'm sure you guys have a lot. You just finished your 300% triple relic drops. So you have three times the junk and most of them probably are defense pieces as well. So you're already done farming for him. Uh, Ho Ho on the other hand, um, skills with speed. She, she wants uh, a bit of, of, of HP sustain. Not too drastic, not too demanding. Um, and it's, it's, but it's slightly more requirements that other characters might want like uh, your energy restoration ropes and whatnot, etc, etc, which competes a little bit more, but I wouldn't say it's like a huge thing to, to shift the needle. In my opinion, I think free-to-play kit, I'll give it to Ho Ho slightly more, just because Aventurine might be a bit challenging to farm for for a brand new player into the game. For most of you new players, he will probably be just a massive tank once, and he scales off into like a damage dealer late game when you have like crit rate, crit damage, even in your support pieces. Um, ceiling is higher for Aventurine, but floor is also much higher. Ho Ho has a very low floor, but also very low ceiling. Can't really go past beyond that. And the differences are not too much in terms of relic. And 
finally, let's go into the last one. And for the entirety of this video, I've been like, I'm uh, just being objective, no bias whatsoever. But in this section, as always in all these videos, uh, what I like to do, and if you're finding value in this video so far, do like and subscribe. My personal thoughts is if I'm a brand new player or I'm a player now and already have two um, like Luo Cai and Fu Xuan, let's talk about the worst case scenario. I probably will be picking a Ventrine up over Ho Ho, especially if I have a surplus of choice. Um, that, why do I say that? Is he scales very well into the future trends. I want to maintain like my 36 stars. That matters a lot in for, for a player. Um, a Ventrine also, if you like IPC, goes very well into that. Ho Ho, on the other hand, is still a, a while away. And if you're even thinking about Ho Ho in the first place, means that you have the luxury to wait. And if you have the luxury to wait already, so why don't you wait for something that is coming, that is going to change with the meta and improving as well. That is, I think, the biggest factor. If both of them are here at the same time, I think it'll be a likely a bigger competition for both of them. Um, but yeah, for the most part, I think Aventurine sees more uptrends. And for that, as an investor, I like long-term things. I play the long game and I think Aventurine is better for the long run. Uh, at least in my opinion, but you really can't go wrong with either of them or any of the four limited sustained characters. And check out the other videos I have here in this end screen where I talked about the other two characters. One of them maybe might be coming back for a rerun or you already have one of them and want to know my thoughts on them as well. Uh, check it out and see you guys in the next video.